Hi there everyone and welcome to this week's market update. Don't forget that any advice contained within this presentation is general only, so it is entirely to your particular circumstances and you need to decide for yourself if it's appropriate to you. Okay, so our market today has been a fairly whippy one. At one stage we were trying to break through this pennant, um, but in late afternoon trading, just before the RBA announcement, we started to pull back and that pullback continued right through to the close. At this point of time though, we are stuck sideways with a bit of support through here exactly where we've closed and resistance up across this level here at 73.44. Effectively, 7300 has been a magnet for this market. We keep whipping around it, we keep just swinging from one side of it to the other. Uh, at this point of time, really, it's just all sideways guys until we see something different. Uh, we see this a bit of a consolidation. We did have a quite a strong move coming into that end of financial year, and now we are just whipping around sideways, uh, waiting for that next catalyst. Uh, so the uh, US markets, so we'll get across there and have a quick look. The S&P 500 was closed overnight, um, but coming into the long weekend, the sit, uh, coming into the long weekend though, uh, they were very, very strong. Uh, from where they've started to where they are now, uh, the last uh, across this run, we're, we're almost 5% increase. Some of the previous runs we've seen on the US uh, have that, you know, this, this type of strong momentum have been, gone up to you know, roughly 8 to 9%. So there still might be plenty more to come. Uh, at this point of time, the trend's still strongly up. Uh, we've got plenty of signs of continuation. Uh, they did just come out of a, a very long sideways movement, so I would not be surprised to see this run continue for at least another two to three weeks, or another, say, four to five percent. Uh, so for me, my prediction in the medium term is bullish for the US markets, which I think will drag our market up a bit higher as well, coming into those reporting seasons. So yes, the big news today was the RBA announcement. In that RBA announcement, they slightly reduced their bond buying from five down to four billion. Uh, and that's gonna happen between September and November, okay? Uh, so basically at this point of time, uh, that is a very, very slight tapering of bond buying. Very slight, guys. Nothing to really be too shocked about at this point of time. The great thing for markets here in the long-term uh, outlook of the economy is that the central bank is not in any hurry to adjust monetary policy. They are still extremely accommodative at these levels, which means we've still got another six, 12 months, maybe two years of accommodative uh, monetary policy setting before things really start turning any type of hawkish. Uh, what I liked about this announcement as well is they reconfirmed the market once again that interest rates are not gonna budge for a while. They're still not seeing interest rates moving until about 2024. Uh, and this is a, a very different contrast to what we're starting to see out of some of the analysts out there that are predicting it to happen next year. So the RBA is still you know, very much on the path that they've been on. Uh, they're still very reassuring to markets that nothing is gonna change too quickly here. We know um, bond tapering is not ch uh, gonna change dramatically yet. And, we, and at this stage, what they're telling us is, is that interest rates aren't gonna change for quite some time as well. In particular, what I like is they're talking about wage growth. Finally, after all these years of very little to no wage growth, they're finally aiming for this, right? That's what they're targeting here. They're not really looking to raise rates until wages grow again. And logically, if you think about this, you'd you kind of understand why. House prices have moved so much now that increasing interest rates will have a, a massive detriment to the economy but also doesn't fix the problem. The problem is no wage growth. We need to see strong wage growth for a period of time so wages can catch up to house prices. See, house pricing has always gone up dramatically over the years, right? If you think about what a house was worth when, you know, say 40 years ago to now, um, you know, that, that the house prices have always increased, okay? There's always strong demand for housing. The one thing that stopped was the wage growth. 
okay? Back in the day, there was wage growth to keep up with it. A house probably wasn't more than four times the annual salary. Now we're looking six, eight, ten times annual salaries, right? So, um, and, and, this, and this is the thing, they're targeting that problem, they're talking about it, uh, and what that says to me is that interest rates aren't going up any time soon, guys, right? That's the big thing here. Uh, the bond buying side of it, that's their, their monetary policy setting now. That's the thing that they can increase or decrease depending on how the economy is going. So they've got a new tool. Um, let them play with that tool, guys, as that goes along. As long as they're not aggressively changing anything, it should be fairly positive for markets overall. The China tensions, I think, um, you know, we saw a little bit more tensions come through as China blamed us for interfering in vaccine rollouts through the Pacific. Um, look, uh, there's, yeah, look, anything China related with Australia sees Australian markets pull back. It's that knee jerk type reaction that we always see when there's some China news around. Um, look, this could last a few days. There might be a little bit of uh, whippiness on the back of this. I don't think the market's going to crash on the back of any of these tensions. It, it is more that it takes the wind out of the sails of the market rather than seeing a market turn bearish. So by all means, I'm not bearish on the back of any of this, but it does hold us back a touch. Uh, especially when you see the miners pull back on a day where iron ore has been up quite strongly, it's just quite odd, right? So commodities are running and then you're seeing the miners pull back on the back of some unrelated China news. But keep an eye on those tensions, it always is a bit of a way on markets. Okay, so the next real big thing for the US now is reporting that kicks off early next week. Okay, so Tuesday you're gonna start seeing the big banks in the US report. Um, that's, that's the big thing for me now. Uh, if the reporting comes through a little bit better than expectations, forward guidance should be fairly strong with their strong uh, vaccine rollouts that we've been seeing. Uh, therefore, I still think markets are gonna climb higher and higher and higher from here based on that. Uh, for me, I think the outlook for the US is stronger than what it's been in a long time. They've been very successful with their vaccine rollout. And that's what I think a lot of investors are gonna be really quite focused on at the moment. Not to mention Biden's infrastructure deal that's expected to be passed through the second half of July. So they're the two key bits of information for me in the US. Um, US reporting infrastructure deal, both of them work out in a positive way. Markets are like their head up a fair bit more. Uh, so vaccines and lockdowns, look, another reason why Australia is holding back a little bit is obviously two things. One, we went back into lockdowns around the whole country over the last seven days. Most states are coming out of that except for New South Wales. Uh, New South Wales numbers are a bit all over the place. One day it's over 30, next day it's down at 16. That's not promising at this stage. Um, what we want to see is the daily cases start really turning on average to the down. They haven't, if you average it out, they're still on the increase, guys, okay? So at this point of time, there's a lot of uncertainty around New, uh, New South Wales. The other big problem we've got is the vaccine rollout and the timing of that. We actually saw the GP cancel today, which I think is a sign of what could come for Australia if we don't get this vaccination right. We're gonna get excluded, guys, okay? And this is the scary part for me. We've gotta get vaccinated, we've gotta keep up with what other countries are doing or we will get left behind, okay? Uh, so the growth prospects now for Australia are, are becoming a little bit weaker compared to countries like the US. So there's no surprise that people might be rotating out of Aussie equities into US equities as they've got the clearer outlook than what we've got right now. Even though Morrison came out on Friday with his four phase plan, which is a fantastic thing, I actually, I'm glad he did that. Um, he doesn't have the vaccine rollout plan to back it up. He doesn't have the support of the state governments to back him up at this point of time. So the, the, the news media are just having fun with this, right? Um, and you've got this disconnect between state and federal. Um, none of that's great. None of that's good for markets, guys. It's going to hold us back a little bit. It's going to put a bit of uncertainty out there. And it's going to make it a lot harder for analysts to predict what's going to happen over the next 12 to 24 months. So we need clear vaccine rollout. We need clear path forward to stop these lockdowns, to open up borders, to bring immigration back in, bring our students back in. 
all those industries, we need our travel and tourism industry kicking back off. And we need to stop cancelling major events like the GP. That's going to affect tourism. That's going to affect our economy as well. Um, yeah, so it's little things like that that is really negative for me for the market right now in the short term. I think it's going to work itself out. I think we will get the vaccine rollout on, on a path. And therefore, I think um, the market will be fairly buoyant and continue to rise. What's going to save our market is we've still got a lot of value stocks that are cheap. You look at some of our mines, BHP, Rio, Fortescue, as long as commodities stay at current levels, um, they've got a couple of years in the spotlight where they can continue to really outperform the rest of the market. Um, there's going to be high demand for commodities in the near future. There's at least another year or two of strong performance out of that sector, I believe. So there's pockets of our market that are going to drag us higher, but there's going to be pockets that are going to lag, especially on the back of the, this uncertainty around vaccines and lockdowns. Okay, so um, yeah, that's where we're at in the short term. Hopefully that changes in the next you know, couple of months. Um, the word out there at the moment is under 40s will be able to start accessing the Pfizer vaccine by September. So this hopefully will have itself worked out in the next few months. What that sounds like to me is they'll have enough supply of the Pfizer, they'll have enough staff to deploy it out there, get jabs into arms quickly. Um, so look, that's where the market's hanging at the moment. Um, you know, you've got uh, Australian reporting that kicks off in August. Usually the cyclical pattern here is a run up into August, pull back into September, October. Um, so I still believe that's going to happen. How much we move higher is going to all just depend on how optimistic we become around the vaccine roll now. All right, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, quick market catch up. Take care and bye for now.